All right, guys, welcome to Introduction to Hand Tools. We're going to go through this PowerPoint. If you have any questions, please bring them up at the next class. All right. Okay, the objectives of this module. Upon completion of this module, you'll be able to recognize and identify some of the basic hand tools and their proper uses in the construction trade. <clears throat> Visually inspect hand tools to determine if they are safe to use and safely use hand tools. Okay, performance task, gonna visually inspect the following tools to determine if they are safe. A hammer, screwdriver, and a saw. Make a straight cut using a crosscut saw. Safely and properly use a minimum of three of the following tools. Hammer and cat's paw, screwdriver, adjustable wrench, channel lock pliers, spirit level, carpenter square and steel tape, and a saw. Okay, first here we got a claw hammer. Um, and uh, then the parts of the hammer are identified. Okay, and then a ball peen hammer. And a couple things to be noted, a claw hammer here is uh, used for driving nails and the claws are used to pull and remove nails. Ball peen hammer is what we would use, um, you know, um, to, to apply force to like a wood chisel or a, uh, you know, center punch or cold chisel for metal work. Um, <clears throat> or the round face can also be used when uh, setting rivets in metal um, to round off the, the back side of the rivet. Hey, this is just another claw hammer, kind of a newer futuristic design, kind of an update on what we're used to. <clears throat> okay, sledgehammers. Uh, sledgehammers are a heavy duty tool used to drive posts or other large stakes. Okay, a few different types. We have a long, a double face long handled, double face short handled, and then the cross peen, um, just depending on the job you're trying to accomplish. Okay, proper use of a long handled sledgehammer. Okay, when you swing these hammers, you don't want to swing them over your head um, in case uh, the handle breaks or the head's loose. You don't want it dropping on your head. Okay, so you're going to bring the hammer up in front of you um, and then swing down, striking the object. Okay, ripping bars and nail pullers. Before pulling a nail, be sure that the material holding the nail is braced securely. And when using prying tools, be sure to keep balanced footing. Okay, you really don't want to. As the nail comes loose, be standing in a way that you could fall over. Um, that could actually cause another another accident. So, um, a few different types of bars here. <clears throat> we have a wrecking bar, flat bar, chisel bar, and a cat's paw. And cat's paws are mainly used when you're trying to remove nails that have been seated fully. Okay, here's a couple different types of chisels. In the top left, we have cold chisels. You would use these with a ball peen hammer. Um, to cut rivets or other soft material, uh, soft metal. And um, the blade on a cold chisel is beveled on both sides. And then a wood chisel on the bottom right. Um, these are just sharpened with a single bevel. And uh, when sharpened correctly, they can uh, be almost razor sharp. Um, and uh, was, you could strike those really with any smooth faced hammer. Um, usually if you're doing work in the construction trade, wood construction, you know, you're going to use your framing or finish hammer, uh, but you can also use a ball peen. <clears throat> okay, proper use of a wood chisel. Um, it's a metal tool that's been sharpened or beveled, or sharpened, that has a sharpened beveled edge and is used to cut and shape wood, stone, or metal is a chisel. Okay, and then this illustration, um, they're cutting out a, a mortise for a door hinge using a wood chisel. All right. <clears throat> A chisel head should be replaced or repaired if it is shaped like a mushroom. So what happens is that uh, that illustration on the left happens when that the head of the chisel starts to round off like that is as you strike it, you can actually cause small uh, small bits of metal to become airborne and um, could actually injure someone. <laughs> okay, here's a few different punches. We have a center punch, the top prick punch, uh, it's similar to a center punch just with a much steeper angle and then a tapered punch. A few other punches they don't show is also, um, also roll pin punches, which have a small protrusion in the center to fit into the center of the roll pin so that you can drive them into place. Um, and, uh, and then there's also other punches that don't taper so that you can get them into recessed areas to, to punch part, uh, pins in or out. Okay, here's some common screw heads. We should all be pretty familiar with slotted and Phillips. Um, number three there is a clutch drive. 
four is a Torx, five is a Robertson, and six is an Allen. And you notice Torx and Robertson have a um, trademark on there. Um, those are those are proprietary names. Okay, screwdri screwdrivers should never be used near live wires. Um, you know, you have a great conductor there with that piece of metal in your hand. Okay, here's one that uh, we don't talk about enough. Um, sizing the screwdriver properly for the screw you're using. Um, <clears throat> with slotted screws like this, having the wrong size screwdriver can really damage the head of the screw or uh, completely destroy the screw to where you can't get it out. Uh, so it's important to have different size screwdrivers. Um, and this is also true with Phillips head. Um, they have different sizes, number one, two, three, four, and so on. Uh, with number two really being the most common uh, in construction. Okay, some different types of pliers here. Um, you know, uh, we have examples of these in the shop if you guys need to look at any of these. Okay, pliers with serrated teeth that grip flat, square, round, or hexagonal objects are called tongue and groove pliers. That's what they're shown using here in this, this illustration. Uh, sometimes these are also referred to as channel locks. Uh, channel lock is a brand name that is... Uh, that has kind of been adopted as the name for these pliers, but the correct, correct terminology would be tongue and groove plier. Okay, some uh, non-adjustable wrenches. We have an open end wrench, a box end wrench, uh, hex keys, and then a combination end wrench. So this is a combination of the open end and the box end. The main difference is, is a Open end wrench will have two sizes on it, and also a box end wrench will be the same. The combination is it's one size for the opened and the closed end. Okay, striking wrenches. Striking wrenches, um, a lot of times you'll see them for larger, larger uh, fasteners, but um, basically you fit them over the fastener, and then you hit the striking surface with a sledgehammer to, to dislodge the, the fastener. Okay, adjustable wrenches. Okay. So on the top, we have a pipe wrench there. This is for gripping uh, pipe fittings and, uh, and steel pipe. A spud wrench, um, notice a spud wrench has, has a flat, uh, flat jaws on either side that aren't serrated. So it's gonna grip onto, onto a specific part. Um, whereas like the pipe wrench has serrated teeth to help it hold onto the pipe. And then the adjustable end wrench, um, <clears throat> which a lot of times people refer to as a crescent wrench, which again is a brand name. Um, you know, adjustable end wrenches can be handy tools, but uh, always when possible, use the correct size wrench to not damage the bolt. Okay, uh, we're looking at supplemental art now and using an adjustable end wrench. Okay, a socket is used to grip a nut or bolt. So sockets are a good option as they fit around the fastener and uh, provide the best hold. Okay, here's a ratchet and torque wrenches. Okay, a few different types here. We have a manual uh, or click type, a digital, and a tensimeter with a wire and dial. Okay, when using a torque wrench um, to tighten a bolt and ensure that it is properly aligned, you should place one hand on the head of the torque wrench, uh, place the other on the, on the knurled handle at the end, and when you're tightening with a torque wrench, do so in a fluid, smooth motion. Don't... Uh, don't jerk on the end of the wrench because um, you're trying to get an accurate torque on the on the fastener. Okay, steel rule, tape measure. Okay, because of its stiffness, a folding ruler is better than a cloth tape for measuring vertical distances. Okay, here's a laser measuring tool. Oh, some precision measuring. We have a, we have a micrometer here. This is one has a digital readout. Okay, looking at levels, uh, two foot levels and torpedo levels. We have examples of these in the shop. We'll show you. Uh, torpedo levels are quite handy when setting metal pipes. Uh, they usually have a magnetic strip along one end. Okay, um, when using a level, the air bubble should be between the two lines on the on the tube and the level. This tells you when it's level. And level would mean horizontal. If it's vertically straight up and down, then we refer to that as being plumb. 
hey, here's a digital or electronic level. Uh, these are really neat tools because uh, if you're doing something in construction where you need a certain amount of fall, so many degrees of fall or a certain slope, you can actually set that in the level so that as you're laying like concrete forms, they'll be at that fall um, from the beginning. So then uh, everything, everything falls the way you want it to or the water runs off the way you'd like it to. Okay, here's a laser level. Okay, types of squares. Okay, so we have a carpenter square. Uh, you know, these are the large squares we used while laying out our surveyor's totes. Got a, one blade's 24 inches long, the other 18 inches long. A uh, rafter angle square or speed square. Uh, these are real handy tools um, to use in construction and welding as well. Uh, tri square, just basically a shrunk down carpenter square with a with a rule with the ruled measurements only a, only along one side, and then a combination square. These are extremely handy tools as you can do 45 straight lines, and then they have a steel rule. Um, and also a lot of them are equipped with a scribe as well. Uh, a couple things when you are using those in class, please do not take them apart as uh, the small parts end up getting lost. And then we have a steel rule and then just a piece of cast aluminum that's no good. So please keep those together when you're using them in the class. Okay, here's an illustration using a carpenter square. Um, using a combination square to mark a 90 degree angle and using a combination square to mark a 45. Okay, plumb bobs. Um, so show plumb bob here on the left and this is just basically a weight that can be attached to the end of a string or chalk line to give you a, um, give you a reference from a, from a point above that it's gonna be straight down from your point above. Um, and then in, in order to transfer a chalk line to a surface, stretch the line tightly and snap. So the chalk line's on the right. That yellow case holds a powdered chalk that then coats the string, and you would put it along a mark, pull the, pull the string tight, and then snap the string, and it'll snap a straight line along your material. Okay, here we have a picture of a plumb bob being used. Uh, make sure it's tied off correctly so you are transferring that, that mark correctly. A couple of chalk lines. And here's an illustration using a chalk line. You hold it tight, and as the guy's doing there in the green shirt, pulls up on the center of it and lets it go, kind of like plucking at a guitar string, and it'll transfer the line to the material underneath. Okay, utility knife. So when using a utility knife, place a peep of, piece of scrap under the object you are cutting in order to protect the surface under the object. Uh, the safest kind of utility knife is one with a retractable uh, head or blade. Okay, to avoid being thrown off balance when sawing, brace yourself on the last stroke. Um, this is because the pressure that you're placing on the saw to complete the cut, you don't want to be uh, leaning in such a way that as that as the stock breaks off, um, that you fall or slip. Uh, this could cause an injury. We have a couple different saws shown here. Uh, coping saws used to cut angles or curves in wood. A uh, hacksaw would be used traditionally more for, um, for metal. And uh, then a back saw, we used a few of those and that just means that saw when it cuts, the cutting action actually takes place on the back stroke. Okay, <clears throat> the saw used to cut curves quickly in wood, plywood and wallboard is a compass saw. So a compass or keyhole saw is shown down there. Um, and uh, this can be used to cut circles in, in uh, wood, plywood, or wallboard. Also, they have a drywall saw that actually works really well for cutting circles as well in, in drywall. And then a hand saw below. Okay, kerf of a cut. Uh, this is an important one to talk about, and this carries over when we start welding as well. The kerf is the measurement of the width of the blade, the material that's lost by the blade passing through the material. Okay. And we will we will touch on this again in the in our cutting section. Okay, different types of file or files or rasps. Uh, you can see the different ones shown here. A couple of things when using a file, you always want to make sure that there's a handle on the file. Uh, if not, the tang, which we'll go to this picture now, the tang can actually be pushed right through your hand. Um, so it's important that there's a handle on there. If there's no handle, don't use it. 
Okay, here's an illustration of using a rasp. Okay, after using a file, brush the filings from the teeth with a file card. And that's a file card shown there. Those are really stiff um, steel teeth. Okay, some different types of clamps, C-clamps, some locking C-clamps, a spring clamp, and then a quick grip. Uh, we had a few of those out there you guys were using as well. Okay, um, pipe clamps, hand screw clamps, bar clamps, web clamps. Um, these are going to be a little more common um, in the construction trades or uh, furniture making, some of those uh, types of trades. We do, we do occasionally have a need for something like a pipe clamp and welding. But more often or not, it's the locking C-clamps or the C-clamps we use a lot. Okay, uh, clamp should be discarded when the frame is bent. If the frame of the clamp is bent, it, it won't clamp straight or it won't clamp evenly. And um, it could also break now that it's been damaged. Okay, the manual chain hoist. After lubricating and before using, check a chain fall or come along to make sure there's no that no lubricant got into the clutches. Okay, a round bladed shovel is used to dig holes and remove large amounts of soil. Okay, so the thing is, is a, is a round blade or a spade blade, are really the only ones that you should be using to dig with. Square shovels really don't work well trying to dig, dig a hole. Um, they do work very well for trying to pick up, pick up material that's on top of a flat surface. So, you know, if you have a pile of dust you brushed up in the shop, they work really well for picking up things like that. Hey, okay, here's just some basic, basic uh, illustration of how to use a shovel. Okay, when using a pickaxe, uh, check to be sure that the head is fixed firmly to the handle. Okay. Uh, here's some supplements on file types and one other supplement picture. Okay, this concludes the hand tools section. Um, Please remember once you reviewed the PowerPoint or this video, uh, please remember to move on and uh, complete the uh, discussion post as well as the quiz for hand tools. Thank you.